ever just like lie to yourself, bro? And you gotta look yourself in the mirror and be like, yo, why are you lying right now? Like, I dead told myself I had writer's block. Like, nigga, you ain't never had writer's block. Like, you always got some shit to fucking say. It's just that sometimes you don't feel like expressing that in the moment. Every day you're not supposed to write. Like, there's certain days you're supposed to sit there and reflect and read and take things in. I just think that I could just write, but it wouldn't be from the depth of my soul. I need to just take information in right now. <laughs> How many days remain forgives my thoughts so much pain? When I die, do my thoughts stay the same? Or do they die with my body frame? Trapped in this body game. Trapped in this body game. Trapped in this body game, like, I know life's not a game, but there's so many elements in life that make you feel like it's assimilation. Makes you feel like we got a clock, makes you feel like there's referees, make you feel like there's teams that we play on. So sometimes I wonder, like, that little voice inside of your head, like, your conscious mind versus your subconscious mind, it's like, is that little voice inside of your head your bit emoji? <laughs> like, I'm out here in Brooklyn, fake nervous as fuck, about to go to, like, Nike, you know what I'm saying? They pick the design, this Air Max and all that. They give me a pass on my face on it and all that. Like, yo, we really in the Nike lab, like, making shit happen. Like, it was a dope-ass experience. Like, I guess it's my perfect opportunity to get my one. Hey, Kung Fu style. On air, what's good, what's good? We're what's designing up? shoes in here. What's up? Huh? So we at the move ball station right now. We got to create your move ball so you print your pictures out. I print out a bunch of pictures that represent New York for me. Everybody's catching their vibe. This is the station you get to pick what shoe you want to use. You got 10 Air Max to choose from. I choose the Air Max BM because it's not as popular, you know what I'm saying, chip on the shoulder type thing. But everybody's catching a vibe, but what does New York mean to me? Time and money. That's the common denominator in New York. How much time you got, how much money you got. So once I got to my board, I'm thinking like, yo, so I had Biggie on my board, had Max B on my board, had barcodes on my board, Sarah Jessica Parker, but the whole vibe was just simply, what is time and money in the country of New York? So the train... I took that L. I took that L. I ain't gonna lie, I took an L. I took an L all the way. Right, it's been like a year, so I could admit my shoe was fake trash, and it was trash because I wasn't myself. I went in there thinking less is more or making a shoe with more to design. And if I was just fully my creative self, I know I'd have made like a wavy ass shoe, and I'm upset at this moment that I didn't make the shoe that I originally thought to make. But it's like. Yo, it is what it is, man. Like, you always gonna lose when you're not yourself, and that's 100% of a fact. Like, the co the concept of time and money was cool, but, like, there's other elements in the way I could have made the shoe. And plus, like, I took that L. I took that L. I ain't gonna lie, I took an L. I took an L all the way. And plus, sometimes you gotta look at what won. Like, an Asian nigga eating a bacon, egg, and cheese won. Like, always been to sneakers, always been to Nike. I'm actually wearing them now, like, my favorite pair, the infrared 90s. Really brought me, like, connected with the city was the bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. $5 in their pocket. As a kid, you're unstoppable. We would just grab a sandwich and sit on the curb and just like, it was kind of like our hangout spot. It doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you know, where you live in the city. If you're a true New Yorker, you go to the bodega. Every bodega, like, no matter what borough and what neighborhood, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich is the same. That's one thing I see that really connects everyone in the city. Once I thought of like, like an Asian nigga eating a bacon, egg, and cheese won. Like, he made a shoe about a bacon, egg, and cheese. And that shit kind of hurt me, like, being an OG real Bronx nigga. Like, yo, like, I didn't even know Asian niggas eat bacon, egg, and cheese. Like, I got Asian friends, and they ain't never seen them eat a bacon, egg, and cheese a day in my life. Like, the most I might have seen is a butter roll, bro. But it's like, nah, bro, I kind of felt the way about that, too. But he won, though. He deserved the win. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like... That's New York City at its finest, like cultural diffusion. Like, you got Asian niggas eating bacon, egg, and cheese, getting it from the Ock bars. Like, I don't know if they deadly take EBT, but you gotta respect it. Like, sometimes you gotta respect the hour, bro. You do. Just came back from Nike, man. Had a great time. Now we at work. Still in staff game today. After that, gotta show at John Jay. My screen cracked. We're gonna get it fixed one of these days, but we out here making it happen, man. See, throw Bronco, man. You already know, man. Who am I now? I'm just me trying to figure out who I need to be. But you heard? Let me break. 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 Let What's going on with your boy C. Though Blanky? Don't never miss a free though. I ain't gonna lie, today I wanna talk about perspective. 
Like, I think perspective to me is heaven on earth. Like, perspective and time are the common denominators to life. Because the only thing I feel like we all relate to is time. I'm never going to say 24 hours because that was created by man. You feel me? The only thing I feel like we related to is sun up and sun down. And I think perspective is the most important thing. Like, at times, I get down on myself. At times, I get mad at myself. At times, I feel like I'm not working hard enough. I'm not grinding hard enough. And I got to realize that, like, these unrealistic expectations or these things that I, I fall victim to, are they ego? Is it flesh? Or is it feel like I'm not in my divine purpose as a, as a soul, as a spirit? And I think sometimes we get caught up because when you're in that path of like in that divine purpose for your spirit, you 100% know that like that's the right things. But when you fall victim to even the flesh or the ego, even when you accomplish what is it that you're trying to accomplish, you don't feel satisfied. It's kind of like I remember like and my brother used to tell me, it's like, yo, like you keep on wanting to get all the Jordans. Like you don't get all the Jordans, but you're still not going to be happy. Like there's always going to be another Jordan, always going to be another Pell, always going to be another Silky. There's always going to be something else that you're going to feel like you need to validate who you are and what you want to be in this world. And I've come to realize that because I feel comfortable in my own skin and I validate myself, then the world will validate me instead of vice versa. I used to look for things in the world to validate me. So if the world validated me, then I'll feel validation within myself. But I realize because I'm great within me and I love me, the world can only give me what I am because I attract that love in that same light. And I think that's the space and the perspective that my art comes from. So any given time that I feel like it's not coming from there, sometimes you got to put the pen down. Like, we all could write about things. Like, I might I write almost every single day. I'll never stop writing. But it's like, what is it about? Like, I was talking to my homie Mal yesterday, and I, like I said something. He's like, yo, bro, you got to write that down. It's true. It's like, yo, if, like, if the world has 16 bars, can I get one letter? Like, if there was 16 bars in the world, like, can I get one letter? Can I get, like, one comma, one period? Like, like think about the impact of what that means. Like, think about how many people that have walked this earth that have made impacts that change our life on a day-to-day that we don't remember. Like, a toilet might be one of the best inventions ever, but nobody can tell me who invented the toilet. Don't nobody know who invented the toilet. You know who invented the light? But it's kind of like... I, like, after he invented the light, you still have to go take a shit. You feel me? Like, who invented the toilet? Who invented that running water system? Like, things like that we take for granted. And it's kind of like, for me to ever think that there's going to be a time in history where my name can be remembered without, like, putting a certain amount of effort or work in is kind of crazy. When you were sitting there fighting over peanut butter and jellies, sitting there playing sporks, sitting there hating them, like, freaking mad chocolate milks, And you think about all the stuff you've done from now till then. All of it. How you feel. And a lot of that shit, I sit back up like, yo, like, there's a lot of dope times, a lot of great situations, a lot of painful situations as well. But you learn from those things. Like, things like that, like, you grow from, like, like, it's so wild, but it's like, as much as, like, I love the joy, I remember the pain the most. It's like every time I lose $20, I remember it, but I don't remember when I find $20. And I think that's the crazy thing about life. It's like we always remember like when we get hurt, but we don't remember when we heal. And I think I want to bring more of a perspective and a light to like understand that healing holds the same amount of value as the pain. And I feel like especially in this world and society, we don't do that. And I want to do that. And I want to put my light to that. Like I just look back and realize like, yo, bro, like, even though it was a contest, and even though I didn't advance, like, I designed the shoe at Nike. Like, even though it didn't get into a prototype, like, I'm sitting down with Nike, they sit down, they give you 10 blank white shoes, they're giving you different type of fabrics, different type of designs, different type of looks, colors, laces, all different blueprints, and they're giving designers with you, people that sign up on shoes, and it's like, in that moment, you gotta understand, like, yo, bro, like, my teacher used to want to kick me out of class for designer shoes. Like, when Nike ID came out, I'll never forget it. Me and my son, Elijah Torres, he actually worked. He's a fitness instructor right now. He be with the Brooklyn Nets and shit. We used to sit in class like, who Nike ID going to be better? You feel what I'm saying? Like, who, who going to design a better shoe? And we used to, like, get kicked out of class and teachers get mad at us for that. So, almost 10 years later, to be sitting in any space of Nike, I don't care where it's at, to design a shoe is a big thing. But it's kind of like, at times, I'm like, damn, they ain't picked my shoe. Dang, I could have been this. It could have been that. But it's like... But look at what it actually was, though. Like, look at that perspective. Like, look at what it is that you actually got to do. And sometimes it's like, 
to me, like the silver lining, like living on, living on the silver line is the best place you can live in life. Because sometimes we never gonna know that lesson. It's like so many times we try to reflect and learn the wisdom or we try to reflect and get like the gems from an experience in the experience. Like I just went to that, like say if I did it yesterday, I'm trying to figure out the knowledge the next day and it's like, nah, like you gotta live through that drink. Like it's kind of like you can only live and then reflect back for experiences and perspective. It's hard to get perspective and experiences in the moment of the act. Like, it's hard to do that. Like, it's a process, then there's a result. Nine times out of ten, when you get to the result, you can look back at the process like, even though I thought I didn't want that, that led me here to get this. And sometimes I feel like, see, like a lot of times growing up in like low poverty areas, like we're deemed to have these things that, that, that we feel like brings us value. Like growing up as a kid, there was nothing more special than walking to school and having them brand new shoes on. And sometimes I feel like we associate the feeling that we get from the acceptance of our peers with the shoe. But in all reality, we just want the love from our peers. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. And I feel like a lot of times we chase social currency. We chase different things that we feel like deem us as important or influence or give us value within this society that really only give us value within our flesh. And it's like, it's tough because like when, when, when shit really gets hard, like when life gets hard, you live in your soul. Like, the real core of who you are is your soul. Like, your body is just real estate for your soul. Once you realize that you can never get old, that's going to be in the book too. Book dropping real, real soon. But you got to understand that. So when you get to that space, it's like, what satisfies my soul? Like, what makes me feel great from the inside and then it will reflect on the outside? And I think, like, that's 100% a beautiful thing. Like, I thank God every day I was born Jamaican, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like... And like Butcher Bunsen got this thought, like line is like style is style and style can't spoil. Like I've seen like people in my culture wear Gucci fake from head to toe, but you can't tell them it's fake. Cause how they represented it and how they walk with it. Like you could tell like you could say that's fake, 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 but the confidence in the way that person was walking with it, you can't deny that. Like they had Gucci on their soul. And I think that that's important. Not to say that that Gucci is more valuable than off white or any black owned business or brand, but just looking at society for what it really is. I feel like it is black history more. We gotta support black businesses. We gotta build in that, right? But I think like perspective matters. Like, like what are we really trying to do in this world and like what's our impact? Like what 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 does that matter? Like, who are we really? You know what I'm saying? Who am I now?